Hey fellow gamers, it's Cozy Mel and I'm here with another video for you. Just the other day I did a video about the treasure chests in Kilima uh, to help out the new players that are coming in from Steam on Monday and um, we'll have brand new characters and need some treasure and some money and some seeds and food and all that good stuff that we can find in these treasure chests. And the most popular comment I got was, when will you do Bahari? When will you do Bahari? <laughs> so um, I know from experience that about half the chests in Bahari Bay require the glider. So what you do in order to get the glider is watch my other video about how to get the glider. I won't waste time on it now, but it doesn't take very long if you just follow the steps in, in my video about getting the glider. So I went ahead and did that. It's part of going into your very first temple, the Temple of the Waves. Okay, so now I have left my house by the back door. And I have, if you go out, if you leave your plot out back and go the back way out through the mine tunnel, you will end up in northern Bahari Bay. Bahari Bay, if you're a brand new player, is split in half. There's a north and a south, and there's an Oh, an ancient aqueduct type wall. This wall divides the north and south and there are only a couple of holes to get through from the north to the south unless you're going to pay 50 gold to travel by travel board. Most beginning players are not going to do that. So we're going to be doing a lot of walking and I'm also not going to waste your time watching me walk. So I will show you on the map where I am at each location so you can find the chest. I am at the first location right now. I climbed up here from down below. You can easily climb up here. Just climb and climb and climb and you will make it. I am facing the central Bahari landing point. That central Bahari station is going to be a landmark for you for the rest of the game. That is where you land if you come here by travel board from Kilima. But it also is a place you can walk to from your house. If you come from your house and you're walking, I walked here. I walked down this way. I climbed up here on top of this. And on the map, I am right here. This word on the map, ancient aqueduct. You see the T in aqueduct duct and you're just going to keep going a little bit farther than that on the map and before you get to this bump out of the wall right here up on top of this little bluff you're going to find the chest so we have just gone a little bit east and south of the words ancient aqueduct and found ourselves at the very first chest in Bahari Bay and you don't need a glider for this one but hopefully you got your glider from Najuma down in South Bahari because you will need it as the day goes on. Okay, we got Sweet Leaf, a couple Briar Daisies, the treasure chest, and 20 gold. So that 20 gold is very helpful. Okay, I'm going to go to the next chest. As a matter of fact, I'm probably just going to go ahead and fly down. So if you've got your glider, you can fly down. Otherwise, you can jump off the cliff. You'll roll. <laughs> but right behind Bahari Central Stables. See, this is Bahari Central Stables. You were right here. You jumped. You rolled. You ran. And behind the barn, right here, behind the barn, there's a pile of hay. And in that pile of hay is a chest. And I'm embarrassed to say... I didn't see it for the first month I played the game, but there you go. Cooking oil, butter, your treasure chest, and 15 gold. So we have been on this chest hunt for about one minute, and we have 35 gold. So we are on top of the statue garden. We are about the tallest spot we can get on top of the statue garden. If it's not tall enough, I will have to climb up here onto the cliff at this point up here and fly down. Because what we need to do is fly across the river and land on one of the ruins that's over on this little island to get the chest. Cannot promise I can make it from here. I kind of think I can't. But I guess I will go ahead and give it a try and see how close we can get to making it. 
it's always more frustrating when you just almost make it. Yay, we did it. <laughs> okay, so let's open it up. And we got Dragon's Beard Pete, Heat Root, and the Pirate Treasure Chest, and 35 gold. Now, because we get to keep our, our Pirate Treasure Chests for every one of these, our bag is going to fill up rather quickly. So at some point in time, I will have to go home and empty out my bag. So just keep in mind that you will have to do that. And I have made several treasure chests at home or storage chests at home to put my things in. So that'll be ready to go when I get there. Okay, I am right here um, on a ruined bridge area. This is a ruined bridge area. And this is the statue garden. You were here. This is Proud Horn Pass. This is where the stable is. You got something from behind the stable, okay? And you're just going to have to stop the video and look at the map and figure out where this is. You will see a road that looks like two bridges are coming out over this road, over the top of it. See that on the map? And here's exactly where you need to stand. And if you stand right there, you will see this treasure chest, okay? You get a pearl, gold ore, and your treasure chest, and 54 gold. So, pretty good haul there. Again, you'll probably want to pause your video so you can memorize the map. I'm right here. This is where you need to stand. This is Proudhorn Pass. We were right over here, remember? We were right here. I went down this road and I turned to the left after I crossed the bridge and I only came a few feet and I turned to look underneath this mountain. There's a cave underneath here, okay? So right here inside this cave is the next chest. So this is how it looks when you're out here. It's easy peasy lemon squeezy. You're gonna splash through the water, go to the end, pull the chest, sweet leaf, heat root, pirate chest, and five more gold. So a little less gold in this one because this one's really easy to get. You're not climbing your heart out to get this one. Okay. When you come from the back door of your house. Your house is down here where I'm going around and around that marker, the outskirts board. When you come out the back door of your house, because maybe you went home to empty out your chest, then you can come straight out of your house and turn toward the north. So you're gonna be going left and follow this road all the way up until you get to this bluff, this big bluff that's close to where Tamala lives. This is Tamala's house. The first time you see it, you will gasp. It's so covered with flowers and vines and has this witchy vibe and it is beautiful. It's, a, it's like a whole thicket of beauty. Anyway, that's Tamala's house. But before you would get there, if you're walking from your house, you'll see this big bluff and you climb and climb and climb till you get to the top of it. And then if you stand on the top of it and look toward the southeast, this is what you'll see. But um, I think you could fly it. Yep. All right. So we got two gold ore and a treasure chest. Gold ore, that is so nice. We are at Tamala's house. So this is Tamala's house right here. We are almost there. We are in this shallow river. You can walk the whole thing. You can walk in it. And right here is a broken boat, half of a boat. And it's right here on the map where I'm circling, okay? You guys can find it. And if you look inside the broken boat, the treasure chest, grab it up. Five dispel arrows, 10 standard arrows, 20 gold, and your treasure chest. Okay, we are at the waterfall. It is east of Tamala's house. It is near the words thorny thicket on your map. 
There are several waterfalls in uh, this area of the thorny thicket. This is the largest waterfall right here. So if you leave Tamala's house, you pass up the word thorny thicket on the map and then keep following the river to right here. Then you jump, jump down to the bottom of the waterfall and you'll be standing right where I am. And we're going to go behind the waterfall like we did in Kilima. So we'll go ahead and go over here. I know it looks dangerous, but uh, it lets you in. So we go behind the waterfall and we'll grab the trunk and you're going to get 25 gold, 20 heartwood planks and your treasure chest. Okay, sometimes when you are climbing, you can jump, hit the space bar and jump up high while you're climbing, you know, to cover more ground quickly. I would not do that here at this cliff. You might be able to jump once. The rest of the time, just climb slowly. Otherwise, you might run out of climbing stamina and fall. And the only stamina we have to worry about on a stamina bar in the entire game, the entire beautiful game of Palea, is just the one when you're climbing. So I would just take it slow, climb all the way up here to the top of the cliff that I am standing on. Okay, so I'm going to circle my mark. I'm right here. Now, if I zoom out so you can see, here's Thorny Thicket. Here's the waterfall. We just went behind the waterfall. I walked. I walked and walked and walked and walked down here. Walked up this road. Broken down, destroyed mine under here. Climb up above it, and you will be right where I'm standing. But here's the treasure chest. We got 29 gold, 1 gold ore. Another gold ore. That's awesome. And the treasure chest. Okay, we're going to head to the next one. Okay, we are back over at the outskirts. We are very near to your home. This doorway right here goes to your home. This is the back door into the back of your plot. If you need to empty your bag, please go do so at this point because this would be a good time to do it before we go to Southern Bahari. But when we're near to your plot, and we are south of the outskirts words on the map. There's a little pond right here and a little hill you can stand on right here. And this is a ruined human ruined, you know, doorway or something. The chest is on top of it. You'll see it right there. Jump down. You don't have to have your glider for this one. I was try I was going to use my glider. Changed my mind. Okay. One bright stream, two sweet leaf, treasure chest, and five gold. So it is a little bit less in this one, but it's still all good stuff to have and sell for money. And it is um, easy to get to this one. You don't have to have your glider. You can just jump. Okay, this one is a very tall climb. I find a spot where I can climb twice, if possible, resting halfway between to get my stamina back. So someplace that you can stand flat footed as you're on your way up the cliff. And where I am right now is one of the only places you can do that. So here's your home. This is the back door to your home. And right here is where you climb up and climb up again. Then you're going to have to jump. You're going to fly and you're going to land on the top of a pillar. It's a pinpoint landing, so you may have to um, push the space bar to land on it, and you may not get it the first time. It just depends on, you know, it, uh, how excellent you are at flying. <laughs> so I am not the greatest in the world, but I just take it slowly, and there you can look back up at the cliff you were on, and you... Blue down here. Let's open it up. It's got heat root, briar daisy, your treasure chest, and 70 gold. 70. Now, you do need the glider to get this one. That's one of the reasons why you get so much more treasure out of this one. Okay, we'll go to the next one. You can see where I'm on the map right here. Okay, flooded steps. You've been there. Here's your home. You've been there. Come down this middle path. This is one of the only openings into the flooded fortress. And we are going to go in to the flooded fortress. This is really not for beginners, but okay. You know, you guys asked for it. So I'm going to help you get through it. 
Um, this is the flooded fortress. It is massive. It is flooded. Some of the water is deep enough that it will throw you back out. And it all looks the same. When you are down there, every pillar looks the same. And so you are constantly seeing areas that you think, um, oh my gosh, where am I? Because you can't tell the difference. <laughs> it is just not uh, a super friendly, easy place to be. But, you know, once you've learned your way around down here, you won't regret it. You'll be glad that you did. So, okay, we're going to go to the, well, there's two chests at least in here. So I'll have to find them for you. Okay, on your map, the central section is officially called the Flooded Fortress. There's another big section of concrete building over here. You cannot climb concrete, only natural cliffs, flooded fortress. And then there's this hoop that goes around it that kind of locks us in here. And then there are tall mountain cliffs on each side. Okay. I have climbed. You can see below me on the map. I climbed up. I stopped. I climbed up. I stopped. I climbed up and stopped again because it's it's almost impossible. I don't even know if it is possible to make this climb in one set of climbing uh, stamina. So I came all the way to the top up here to a ginormous orange tree that will always be here. No one can cut it down. Ginormous orange tree. Okay. And there is a air intake valve or whatever you want to call that thing right there. And it's got water coming out of it that causes it to flow into a little waterfall down below. And there is the chest right there. So you're just going to jump. You don't have to use your glider. Splash down in the water. So I feel that you can get this one without your glider. It's just, uh, it's a hard climb. Five heartwood planks, one iron bar, and your pirate chest, and 85 gold, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, it's a, it's a good source of gold. Now we have to go all the way to the other side. And it's going to be more climbing and jumping, which, you know, I don't require you to watch. <laughs> I know it's boring. It's going to make the video take longer. But I feel like I need to show you this climb. So we're starting here, which is kind of next to the doorway to get out of here. We're starting right there. We're going to go ahead and wander across here. This gets taller and taller and taller the farther you wander across it. So you end up at a higher place than you started out, as you can kind of see. So it works to your advantage to go at it from this edge, but then you're going to have to kind of jump down, go across, go back up again. There's a lot, <laughs> a lot of climbing. We've got some little small orange trees here. Uh, you're going to go up here. And you can kind of see around to where the chest is, but you need to be able to get up onto this. And then you're going to jump that way and go across that broken bridge. This is not um, beginner. <laughs> this is not beginner. Stop. But jump. I don't envy you this jump. I don't envy me this jump. Who's making me do this crazy stuff? Oh, yeah, it was all you nutty subscribers. Five leather, 10 slowdown arrows, the chest, and 55 gold. Okay, well, you might think it's worth it. It gives me heart attacks. We've made a circle, okay? So now you can see the stable, proud horn stable. That's your central point. Don't ever forget it. People are always going to tell you in game where things are in Northern Bihari compared to the proud horn stable. 
Okay, so that's the central Bahari stable at Proudhorn right there. So you come this way to a keyhole. There's a keyhole in the wall. And this is one of the only ways to get through the wall and get to Southern Bihari from here. And oh, if I remember this right, we have to jump down into a hole. And I believe you could do this without, uh, <laughs> without your glider if you so choose. I think we want to get to that hole in the wall down there below us. And I, uh, yep, you could just jump. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's crazy, but you don't die in this game. And here's the chest and the hole in the wall. Five gold, two bright shroom, and your pirate chest. So, you know, you can sell those bright shroom if you don't want to hang on to them. Sell them for, I don't know, 20 gold a piece or something. But um, it's you can get this one without a glider, so it's a little bit less treasure-wise. But you, But you got it. So there you go. We jumped off a cliff from way up there. Didn't die. Gotta love this game. Straight in front of me. If you look straight over my head, down the TV screen in front of you or the uh, LCD screen in front of you, you will see there's a chest on that rune. So that is where we are trying to land is to get that chest. Now straight down below us this way, that's the um, geyser. Okay, um, I finally gave up on jumping from mountaintops and climbing and all that stuff and went back to the geyser again. This time the geyser shot me up higher and I was able to land on it. So as you can see, this is the exact ruin that I pointed out to you earlier. This is the geyser. This is the travel sign for the Beachcomber Cove. And this is where you have to land. And I did finally, with this geyser, get up high enough to get there. But it took three or four tries. So that's all I can tell you. It's a, it's an Indiana Jones one. Let's see what we get. Ten gold, eight silver ore, and a treasure chest. For me, not worth it. But <laughs> the only way that you will get your big map to put on the wall in your house your big map of Bahari is by getting these chests. And this is one of them you have to get. So one way or another, you'll have to struggle your way up here. I'll go to the next one. We are at the Windy Runes. You can see right here my blue arrow. We are at the Windy Runes. And we were at Beachcomber Cove. If you remember, we were right here. So we had to do some walking and flying this direction and go past the travel sign and up these cliffs and come over to this side to the windy runes. And as soon as you get close to the windy runes, you'll start feeling like you're sick to your stomach. Oh no, wait, that's because of the Temple of Gales being in here. Lucky for you, you don't have to go to the Temple of Gales yet. Oh, that's all it is. Okay, you're going to have to climb around like a monkey. So once you get here, if you see that pillar at a slant over there, I climbed up that pillar. I walked up, up, and then I came across here. I hopped and hopped, and I'm trying to get out there to where that chest is. And I think when I did this my first time through, I jumped and missed it, you know, two or three times. You just keep trying. That's all I can tell you. Eventually you can jump out here with or without your glider, but it might take you four or five shots. <laughs> and you get two fabric, three iron ore, and the ancient treasure chest, and 40 gold. So this chest right here is a place for you to remember. You can do this without a glider. You can get two fabric here for free. So instead of having to purchase your fabric for 200 gold each, or almost 200 gold each at Tish's store in order to make your glider, you could walk down here and jump and jump and jump until you land on it and get the chest. And then you get two fabric for free out of this chest. And that's, I mean, to get your glider, you just need some wood, 
two fabric and five leather, I think it is. So this helps. If you don't have the money, you can come down here and get it for free. All right, on to the next one. Okay, I'm in the middle of the Windy Ruins, and the Windy Ruins is this flat area right here. Shallow water, shallow water, shallow water, okay? Four bodies of shallow water, broken ruins everywhere. And you will come to this area for a lot of different quest items as the game goes along. This is a, a hidey hole, a place they hide things a lot. Hideaway Bluffs is over here to your west, and Windy Ruins is over here to your east. And you're right smack in the middle. You were just over here at Windy Ruins. I just walked this way. And now we're going to go into a little cave. So straight ahead of us, you see this broken human building, 10,000-year-old ruins. Snake around behind it, and you will enter a cave. And if you go through the cave and around the corner, there's a little back section of the cave, and there's a chest. 29 gold, one gold ore, and the treasure chest. Plenty worth getting, no glider required. So even if you can't, you know, get the glider yet, there are some of these in Bahari that you can do, and they're worth doing just for the gold that's in them. Okay, let's see. Going to the next one. We are still at the Windy Ruins. You can see where my arrow is now. Okay, right here. This is a hole in the ground. You're going to see this a lot as the game goes by. Lots of hidey holes down in this one as well. So it's got a geyser that'll try to throw you back up. But basically, you know, I just jump down in the hole, hope for the best, see if I can make it down in there. And then the geyser will throw you back up later. Up over the top of here, there's a back entrance, we think. It's a back entrance into the Temple of Gales, which is a place that you should never go. No, you'll have to go there, but... <sighs> Makes me queasy even thinking about going back there. Okay, we're going to jump down in this hole, believe it or not. A little bit crazy, but we're jumping down in this hole. And then there should be some vines. Oh, golly. Jump up. Climb up. These vines, yeah, they're just a secret. You sneak through. <laughs> So you'll get to the other side of the secret. Now, if you keep going, there's another hole past this broken statue. And you can jump farther down. And you will do that during several upcoming quests for medallions. But I don't think we need to today. Today, we're just going to loot this chest. We're going to get a pearl and some gold ore and the 18 gold in the treasure chest. Whew. Okay, and then we'll go back through the vines, and then you have to pick your spot, you know, because it's like, well, I'm going to have to climb back up out of here, but I'm going to hit my head. <laughs> so you just kind of squirrel yourself around to the right and the left by using your D key or whatever you got to do and get yourself the heck out. That's a conundrum, I'm telling you, but... uh once you do, you can go to the geyser and get your dress blown up. <laughs> okay, here we are about halfway between uh, Hodari's house. You can see Najuma up there and Hideaway Bluffs where Hashin hangs out. Um, we're right here and there is a ruin in front of us, a broken uh, pillar ruin, and it's on top of that ruin. But instead of going and climbing a cliff and jumping and flying to land on it, you can climb this one. It has a grate on the side of it, and you'll want to remember how to climb this grate because you will be doing it a lot in the Temple of Gales. So um, you just jump up on there. And then if you feel like you might run out of stamina, 
um, you know, just don't jump. Just go slowly. That's really the best thing you can do. All right, there you go. So we're on top of a climbable ruin and that copper climbable stuff that's on the side of here, you'll see a ton of that in um, the Temple of the Gales, but also in the basement of Zeki's store, if you go through the old broken um, pinball machine or uh, video arcade machine, you'll go to where there's uh, kind of a practice maze um, and there's a lot of climbing on the copper there too. Okay, let's see what we got. We got three sweet leaf, 20 heartwood, our ancient chest, and that is filling my bag, kids. So at some point, I'm going to have to go back to the plot and empty out my bag, but I think we're getting close. Okay, on this one, we're gonna wanna land, uh, these two mazes are together in one spot. There's a road that goes all the way around them. The green part is pointed at each end. There's a bridge up here. Pulse Water Plains is written on the map right here. That's the best I can tell you. And I am going to climb up as high as I can on some kind of a cliff nearby because these mazes, I will show you, they have ridges. See those ridges down there? That's to keep you from climbing up from the bottom. So if you start on the ground down at the bottom, you cannot do it. You won't make it. So, you know, all you can do is kind of uh, try for a couple of places and see what works out. But again, it's just going to be a load of climbing that's really boring to watch and uh, makes the video even longer. <laughs> but... The one thing I have a problem with is pushing the space bar twice. So when I push the space bar twice, I land on the ground because I make my actual glider go away. But I think Byron is already up here somewhere. I don't, I have no idea. I think I saw him flying by, but here's the actual chest itself. Right here at the base of this ginormous orange tree that will never go away. It can't be cut down. So the big giant orange tree is always going to be there. And you are going to be at the top of this mesa because you face planted onto the side of it and climbed up. <laughs> Doesn't seem very logical, but that's the case. Let's see what we got here. Two potato seeds, two wheat seeds, and a treasure chest, and 30 gold. And this one is definitely one that you cannot do without your glider. This time our goal is a pillar that's broken, and it's right here at the end of this little tiny road. So it's northeast, uh, west, sorry, of the peak. North and just a tiny bit west of the P in Pulse Water Plains on the map. So if you can see the P, you're going up here through this field to kind of the end of here, and you'll see the pillar. It's broken on top, but you can't climb it. So you have to climb up the bluff right here where I am. So you'll see my arrow right here because I climbed up the bluff. And then you will jump and try to land on it and ugh, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do but we'll see if we can do it okay then after you land on it you need to walk around the edge of it without falling off it's cool Okay, my inventory is full, so it's not even going to let me open this box. So I'm going to have to do something about that. Okay, I ate my food that I brought along for this journey. <laughs> my nice mushrooms that were charred over the top of an open fire. All right, let's see now if it'll let us loot this box. Okay, five wheat, four sweet leaf, and an ancient treasure chest. And 60 gold, because you did have to climb up on top of that bluff over there where the big orange tree is 
and then jump and fly down here to land on this. Okay, we've come to Hodari and Najuma's house. Najuma is over here by the fishing pond. Hodari is over here by the house. Hodari's shop is right here. And we are just kind of south of his shop. And this is a big tree right here. Um, underneath the tree, there's a mine cart. So if you go on up to the tree, there's a mine cart. And you can loot the chest inside and get two sweet leaf and one briar daisy and a treasure chest and 20 gold. And you don't need a glider for this one either. Okay, so we have gotten that one, and there's another one in this area. Okay, we are in Pulse Water Plains, um, between Pulse Water and Beachcomber Cove. We are heading to the old lighthouse. Um, you might as well memorize this path. This is a travel board I use quite often when I have 50 gold to spend to travel to a travel board so it can get me to the lighthouse. This is the lighthouse, and it also figures into quite a few different quests. So. It's a good thing to know about, um, but uh, there are three chests that are for this achievement that are um, in the lighthouse area. And um, some of the things you have to do are like, try to jump and grab these vines and see if you can climb up. And mm, I can't say that they always are the easiest but you might have to use your S and your D keys to go back and forth just a little bit and see if you can make it around and get up in the inside of the lighthouse. There's a lot of broken areas in the lighthouse, so it's not always the easiest to get higher up into it, but... Um, uh, if you are lucky, <laughs> you'll be able to make it up some vines and get to where you need to go. This one is kind of a, a little bit of a weird jump. Get up here. Uh, then you kind of want to turn around, I think face the other direction and jump as well as you can and climb up some more vines without falling up. Ah. I will check. Okay, so we made it to the middle of the lighthouse second uh, kind of story up. This is as high up as you can Go right up there. Um, if you look down, ah, where is it? Where is it? Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, there's a little landing spot down there. So you can jump or you can jump and glide and get to the loot. Ochre cubed tile floor. And then it's kind of um, circling down around the side of the building. There's going to be one chest that's at the very end of the dock when you get down here. And then there's another chest that's going to be behind a curtain wall of vines. So I guess uh, we can peek for that first. Go behind this. Well, I can show you on the map, but here's where you are behind the lighthouse and on this level behind the lighthouse you there's some vines that you can go behind and then out at the end of the dock past broken areas that you can fall through there'll be uh, the last chest okay so if you want to jump down in this hole underneath here there's a chest cooking oil onions and a treasure chest and 80 gold so almost a hundred gold for that one. And then it's, you know, well, I have to get back out. Oh, wow. The climbing. Okay. Now we are at the very tippy tippy end of the dock. 
and if you can see the holes, that's where you have to walk over just carefully. Walk over the broken boards so that you can get here and get 130 gold and um, unopened oysters and your treasure chest. And like I said, you just have to kind of carefully walk over the broken board area to get out here and then to get back off of it. Uh, I think. <laughs> anyway, we are at the very top of the lighthouse. Um, air, you know, the grassy area around the lighthouse where the grass and the rocks are. Because we actually have to get out to an island that is out in the ocean. So you have to start out kind of high up to get out there. So we are going to try to fly to the island and some people can use their take me home button on their map once they've gotten the chest but i just used mine so you know i might be stuck out here for a while we'll see <laughs> but anyway you want to fly all the way out here to the middle of the ocean i've heard people say this is a good place to fish if you're trying to catch that i don't know long-nosed something anyway here is your treasure chest, and we can loot it, and you get the copper manor tile flooring and the pirate chest. The next chest in the never-ending quest is out there on that broken uh, pier. So this is where we're at, Coral Shores, and you saw where we were jumping from. You just have to do it a few times. You start up there on top of those two rocks that are stacked together on the other side of that tree. You climb up there, jump, use your glider, glide over here. You'll miss short of it a few times probably, but eventually you'll make it. 20 sticky smoke bombs, yay! 20 sneaky smoke bombs, 40 gold, and a treasure chest. So that's a pretty good one if you ask me. Now, coming backwards, it was easy to get from that one to this one. But going forward, I couldn't quite get there from this one to that one. So that one must be a little taller. But neither here nor there. Oh, we've got another one to go yet. Oops. Okay, we are back up by Proudhorn on the map. Uh, well, sort of. Here's Proudhorn Pass. And here's the stables. And here's Coral Shores. So we're kind of halfway between. And we were just down in Coral Shores doing the jump, jump thing to get one. This one is, some people call that a cave. I just call it an overhang um, as part of the cliff up there. But uh, whether they call this a cave or an overhang, it's these uh, kind of broken wooden things in here. So you have to start at one end and then it's um well jumping and then kind of skinny walking and then using your glider to jump and i'm likely to screw it up <laughs> like which i'm sure is a big surprise to you all at this point i've only missed a few jumps today Ugh. Okay, then once you make it, you got to climb up the copper step again like we did earlier. But this is just a really skinny post, and you climb up the copper to get to the top of it, loot it, and you get four gold, four silk thread, and the pirate chest. So not as much in this one because you, um, it's kind of, you know, easy to find and close to the ground, but I'm not sure you can do it without the glider. I, I don't, I've never tried to get it without the glider. So I have no idea if that's possible, but, um, you could try better people than me are out there that have been platforming all their lives and could probably do that. But I use the glider. Okay, so from where we were, we are now just a little farther up. 
And I'm on this spot right here where you can see the arm of the ancient aqueduct coming out. The Lighthouse Lagoon is over here. Ancient aqueduct word. Proud Horn Pass word on the map. These will just give you a few little places to orient yourself. Um, I climbed up the highest cliff I could climb up. And then I jumped and flew over here and landed. So I was up there where that big uh, pine tree is. And then I jumped and flew over here and landed. And you can see the ruins in front of me. You have to go around the other side. So when you walk around the other side of the big ruin, then you can see the bridge. So this is the bridge that goes to the wall of the ancient aqueduct wall. And you can't go in there. We've all tried. Even though it's big enough, doesn't let you in. But here's the chest right by this tree. And this is chest number 29, if we're all counting, I think. Iron bar, ancient treasure chest. All right. On the map, here is the lighthouse and the Lighthouse Lagoon. Should have done this one when we were down here earlier, but I forgot about it, guys. I'm so sorry. But we are going to go in a geyser that's northwest of the old lighthouse. So you won't be going all the way up to the top of the mountain the lighthouse is on. You'll be kind of down on the ground, and you're going to try to land right here on this little circle I'm making with my pointer. That's where you want to land. So we want to get shot up as high as possible out of this geyser and then fly in that direction and see if we can land there. Let's see. I'm going to jump in the geyser and try to be facing the right direction. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows if this will work out for me. I can see the round ruin and there is a chest on top of it and there's also a hole that you could fall through. Ah, okay, there we go. So see over here what I mean? There's a hole and you'd fall down to the inside part and you wouldn't be able to get back up here. So you have to land on the part that's not a hole. Let's see what we get. 10, sneaky smoke mob. Oh, plundering the bay. We found 30. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are done. We're finished. We got the achievement. We got the map to put on the wall. We did it. We did it. We did it. And it only took me six hours of recording. Now, it will take me about six hours of editing, too. But, you know, eventually, I'm going to get this video to you guys. And hopefully, you're going to love it and it's going to help you. And you're going to get all these chests and you're going to get your painting of Bahari and you're going to like and subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss a single one of my videos because this was a, sh a bunch of work. <laughs> I love you all and uh, hopefully I will see you in the next one.